You don't have to put 20% down on every rental property you buy. In fact, you don't have to put any money down on any rental property you buy. I've bought over 115 rental doors the past five years and haven't used any of my own money. I'm about to show you how. What I'm talking about is the Burr method or Burr strategy. It's a proven process that has been used thousands of times over and over. In fact, my partner Brian has been using this since 2004, and this method has created millions of dollars of equity for me, and I haven't had to use any of my own money. So let's go over to the whiteboard, let's break down the numbers, and I'll explain it to you. The first and most important step of the Burr strategy or Burr method is to subscribe to our channel. We spend a lot of time and effort every single month putting this channel together to help you become financially free through real estate. All that we ask in return is you subscribe, follow and comment, interact with us on here. Just by doing that, you will learn a ton about real estate and hopefully we can have some fun too. Before I dig into the Burr method or Burr strategy, I'm gonna use those terms interchangeably because they mean the same thing. I want you to understand the power of this method. The power of the Burr method is insane, that the things that it can do for your life, it has made me a multimillionaire just by using somebody else's money to buy rental property. And it can do the same for you, trust me. If I can do it, then you can do it, I promise. Especially because you have our channel to follow that will explain every single step along the way to help you become financially free. The, the, the whole sole purpose of this is not having to put 20% down on every investment and properly and smartly leveraging debt. That's what the Burr method, Burr strategy is. It's leveraging somebody else's money, which is leveraging debt, but you're doing it in a smart way that you have some security and the person you're borrowing money from has a ton of security as well. So let's dig into it. I'm gonna go over what each letter means and then I'm gonna do a real life example that really ties it all together. So stay tuned till the end. So I'm gonna explain what each letter means here now. So here's what each letter stands for. Sorry if you can't read my writing, I'm gonna explain it. So buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. So this is the step-by-step -step process you have to follow, and you may have seen this on other channels, Bigger Pocket talks about this a lot, but there are certain nuances and certain tricks of each letter that you can use to maximize the letter. Cause there's, you can do the burst strategy wrong and have to come out of pocket at the end, or you can do it the right way so you ensure, or at least most likely, that you're not gonna ever have to come out of pocket. And in fact, I know a lot of people that make five to $7,000 on almost every single bird they do because they know what they're doing. So I'm gonna explain how to do that here and go over each letter, tie them all together, and then at the end I'm gonna put some numbers to it and have it make sense so you can really drive the points home and give tips along the way. So make sure to stay tuned the whole video and definitely to the end we'll use actual numbers. This is my patented dot process to explain the bird method. What do you think about that? So, all right, so you have to buy a property at a discount and then you're gonna to have to rehab that property. But the thing is, you can do that with somebody else's money. You do not need your own money. For most times, you'd have to come 20% for the standard traditional way of investing. You have to put 20% down to purchase the property, and then you have to come out of pocket to rehab the property. So I don't have enough money to do you know, 10 to 20 of those a year, and most people don't. So if you want to do more than one at a time, or you just don't wanna use your own money, this is a great method to do that. So you buy a property at a discount using somebody else's money. Then you rehab the property using that same person's money. So you are buying them a property and rehabbing a property with somebody else's money. So now you have a property that's fixed up, um, ready to go on the market. We have a ton of other videos on our channel that explain each one of these steps in great detail. So check those out after you watch this. So you're buying a property and fixing it up without your own money. Then you are getting it rented. It's fixed up, it's ready, it's market ready. You're gonna get it rented. I'm gonna go over some numbers here in a minute to explain that. But you're gonna get it rented because you need to prove to the next stage, which is the refinance stage, you need to prove to the bank that's gonna refinance you. And I'll tie this all together in a minute. You need to prove to that bank that this is a cash producing asset, that it is an asset and not a liability. Cause they're gonna give you a loan to pay this, this, this person back, but they need to see first that it's rented, that it produces cash and that it's an asset, not liability. And then you can repeat it as many times as you want. You can take that same initial money which I'll put numbers to it here shortly, and you can do that over and over and over again. Our first private lender gave us $100,000 six years ago, and I have used that same $100,000 
probably 40 times. That same exact $100,000 has gone in and out, in and out, probably 40 times. So that just tells you the power of having one good investor. And if you stay tuned until the end, I will give you a tip on the four things you can tell any private lender to make them feel secure in a loan with you. All right, so that is the simple, quick and dirty version of the Burr method, the Burr strategy. So now I'm gonna do a slower, clean, version, is that right? Quick and dirty, slower, clean version of it with some numbers to help explain it. Now, the, the thing to note about this is that my numbers are just an example. This is all based off of percentages of the deal, percentage of what the house is worth. So if your market, if these numbers don't, if the, you can't buy a house for what I'm about to explain, that's okay, just double or triple the price, but it should all work because it's all based on percentages. So let's go over it. I'm gonna write the main number down first. 80% that is going to come into into um, that's going to come into play here we get to the refining stage but I want it down there so you guys can see how it all ties together so here's a simple simple example of how to use the burst strategy so you buy a house at a discount you buy a house for fifty thousand dollars using somebody else's money you bought it at a discount because it needed work like I said again we talk about how to buy houses at a discount and lead sources in other videos on our channel so after this go check them out and then the house needs $25,000 worth of work. So you are all in the property $75,000 and you use somebody else's money to do that. So you use other people's money to get to that $75,000. So you have $75,000 in the property of not your own money because you borrowed it. Don't worry, this other person is gonna get their money back plus interest further down the line. So the next thing you do is you are going to get it rented. And for this example, Every number is different, let's say it just rents for $1,000 because I know those numbers that it's gonna cash flow. You need to know, make sure that your property is cash flow. That's just another part of the Burr method we're not gonna get into today. You're gonna rent it for $1,000 because you're gonna take it to the bank and they're gonna appraise it. They're gonna look at three comparable sales, three comparable houses on the market within probably around a quarter mile, preferably the same neighborhood, definitely the same school district, but the same size house and same bedrooms and bath and similar condition. So that's how they're gonna to get to the appraisal, but they're also gonna see that it produces cash. They're gonna make sure that it is an asset and not liability. So they're going to appraise the property. So you did, your, you did your work right, you did your due diligence, you watched all our videos, so you know how to buy houses at a discount. So they're gonna appraise this house and the fact that you, you have $75,000 in this house and they're gonna appraise it and because you know what you're doing, this house appraised for $100,000. So what they do next is crazy. I didn't believe it until I saw it with my own eyes. What they do next is they write you a check, a cashier's check with your name on it, or your business's name on it. They give you a cashier's check for 80% of that appraised value. So the crazy thing, like I just said, is they're gonna write you a check for 80% of that appraised value and it is a refinance. So they are refinancing you. They understand what's going on because you talked to the banks, because you watched your videos and you set up everything ahead of time so the banks know what you're doing and they know that you have a loan on the property. They're aware of that with through a private lender or a hard money lender. So they are gonna write you a check for 80% that on a refinance, which is, I can even do that math, I don't even need Lucas here for that. They're gonna write you a check for $80,000, cut you a cashier's check for that. Now you do have a mortgage on the property, so you have to pay your mortgage every month, plus insurance, plus real estate taxes, plus other expenses, but that's where that comes into play. That's where that, the, the renter is paying all those plus some. So I'll talk about the power of this when we get to the last R, which is repeat. So they write you a check for 80 grand. You owe the private lender, a hard money lender, or yourself even if you had the money and want to get it back, $75,000. So in most cases, that's enough spread. You hopefully did this in two or three months. So whoever lent you the money, they lent you $75,000. Three months later, you give them a check for 80 grand. So they just made five grand. So they just made a good return on their money. That's why they're doing a loan with you. And if you wait till the end, I'll tell you what you can tell private lenders to help them feel secure in their investment. But you just wrote them a check. So you have a mortgage on the property for $80,000. They got their money back plus interest. Now you own the property outright. You have it rented. It produces cash every single month. And then the final R is repeat. So you can do this as many times as you want. If you notice, the private lender got all their money back plus some. So you can use that same amount of money, that exact same amount, uh, that exact same money, and just do it over and over as many times as you want. The crazy powerful thing about this is, right now, you have a property that is worth $100,000, you owe 80. So you have $20,000 in equity right now, day one, which is crazy. That's usable equity that you can use in the future. But the house goes up in value and the tenant pays the note down. So your equity just grows and grows and grows every single day. 
it goes up, it goes up. Personally, in my rental portfolio, we make over $1,500 a day from prices going up and then the value is getting paid down by the tenant. Plus, you get cash flow on the side. So you don't only get that equity, you get cash flow. So it's crazy. You're kind of getting the best of both worlds. Now, I understand that the market goes up and down in real estate, but it goes up a lot more than it goes down. I promise you, you can't buy a house now for anywhere near the same price you bought in the 80s or 70s, probably double. So the prices do go up even through ups and downs. They go up over time. This is a long-term play. So that's the crazy powerful part about this is you're getting equity, you're growing net worth every single day without doing anything besides either managing your property or having somebody manage it for you. So this method is extremely powerful. So now that you understand the Burr method, if you have any questions, please comment with your questions because I will personally respond to them. So now that you understand the power of using somebody else's money and getting a cash producing asset without using your money and paying that person back and having your net equity and net growth or and net worth grow every single month, the main question I get, the number one question I get when I explain this to people is, how do I come up with that initial money? I don't know anybody, I don't have rich parents that are gonna give me that money. So the first thing I tell them is if you really don't know anybody, even though I bet you do, find hard money lenders. Hard money lenders are super easy to find. They're businesses that the sole purpose of that business is to lend money to investors like you on flips, on wholesales, and on you know rental properties using the Burr method. So the way to find them is just Google them. They have websites, they're professional businesses, they're in your town. I promise if you have a town worth a decent amount of population, there's gonna be hard money lenders in your town. If not, the next local biggest town will have hard money lenders. This isn't some mafia type lending, this is legitimate businesses, so they have websites. So just Google them is the first thing you can do. The second way you can do is join local Facebook groups, local Facebook investing groups. Go to the little group icon, which is a little circle with a few heads on it. There's groups and pages. I'm talking about groups on Facebook, and Facebook knows where you are too and type in real estate investing and they'll know whatever market you're in. If you're in Tucson, there's one out in Tucson. If you're in North Carolina, there's one in North Carolina. If you're in Long Island, there's one up there. If you're in Oregon, there's one up there. I'm involved in most of these actually. That's where I post a lot of these videos, but um, before the administrator kicks me out. But anyways, um, they have, uh, those groups are full of investors. They're full of contractors. They're good, full of wholesalers. They're full of real estate agents. They're full of landlords, but they're also full of hard money lenders. So if you type in, Who's the best local hard money lender in one of those groups in your area? I promise you within the first hour, you will get several responses of people telling you who the local hard money lenders are. So those are great ways to find hard money lending, to find this because a hard money lender, if you bought the, deep, the deal deep enough, will fund the purchase price plus the rehab if you bought it deep enough. So the next biggest question I get is, where can I find these private lenders? How do I find these private lenders? You can find them in those groups. Uh, you probably can't Google a private lender. You can find them in the groups. They're a little bit harder to come by because a lot of private lenders are relationship based. Now they don't have to be your parents. They don't have to be your grandparents, but you need to ask enough people. When somebody says they don't know anybody willing to give, enough, give them money, I know that they haven't asked everybody. It could be your neighbor's grandma. It could be your grandma's friend. It could be your cousin's friend. It could, there's a bunch of different people that you know. So contact the people that you know and have them reach out to their network as well, and you will find somebody that's willing to invest in real estate. Now you're gonna to have to tell them these things, these four things I'm about to tell you. You're gonna to have to tell them these so they feel secure in the loan, but if you get your presentation together, if you're professional, and if you look like you know what you're doing because you watched our YouTube, then you will have a much more likely chance of actually raising that fund, raising that capital. Just one private lender can change your life, let alone having two or three. So just getting one might take you several, several months, but it's still worth it. All right, so here's the four things that you tell private lenders to make them feel secure in their investment once you're doing their private money presentation because you're gonna need to present yourself professionally to these people. Whether they're your parents or you don't never met the person, you need to present yourself professionally. So the first thing you tell them to make them feel secure in their loan is that you are gonna personally guarantee. So outside of your LLC, you're probably buying an LLC, hopefully you're buying an LLC, but you're gonna be personally guaranteeing outside of that. So that does a couple things. First, it lets them feel much more secure that you know they don't have to sue the LLC, they could technically sue or go after you personally because you are personally guaranteeing that you're gonna give them the return. And it also shows them that you're willing to stick your neck out there. I personally guarantee every single loan that I do still because that's just part of it. You need to be willing to put your name out there. You need to be willing to take some risk on your part, have some skin in the game outside of your LLC. So that's the first thing you tell them to make them feel secure. The second thing you tell them is, you, or the second thing you do to make them feel secure in their investment is you sign a promissory note line of credit. Now this is a little bit more geared towards the LLC that you're purchasing in but it lays out the terms of their investment, the length of their investment. It lays out you know, when they can call the note due, if they can call the note due, 
It says which court systems you guys will go to if you have to take things the legal manner and also lays out their percentage return, which we're not going to get in that video, but most um, private lenders make between 8 to 12% annualized. So those are two great ways to make them feel secure in their investment. The next thing you do is you list them as an additional insured on the insurance certificate. This is in case the house burn downs, they get paid from the insurance company first. They want to make sure that they're getting their money back. So this just gives them another level of security. And the fourth and final thing they do is they either put a mortgage lien on the property or they become part owner on the deed. So they have that ownership in the property in case you get hit by a bus or something happens to you they have that asset to fall back on as their security in the investment. Now they'll release that lien or get taken off the deed once you give them the money back plus the interest. So hopefully you got something out of this video. This video explains a lot of how to buy rental properties without using any of your own money. Lucas and I put together a video above me where we go into this in detail. An hour and a half we talk about everything you need to do from your first step to your final step. Just watching this video and that video, you know more than I knew after I did 10, over 10 deals. So check that video out if you really want to know the details of how to buy, how to rehab, how to rent, how, how to do a lot of these steps that I talk about. That video explains all of them in great detail, detail, so make sure to check that out. And if you got anything out of this video, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, I'd really appreciate it, and then comment. I'm the one responding to the comments. I'd love to interact with you and hopefully coach you. And if you have any questions about how to explain things, I'd love to answer in more detail.